In this session, we're going to talk about the Gaussian integral. So if we take our basic Gaussian function, y equals e to the minus x squared, OK? This function looks a bit like this. So if we draw our axes here, and our function comes up and down again, it's symmetrical around the y-axis, and it's asymptotic to the x-axis, so it gets infinitely close as it goes off to negative infinity and positive infinity. OK? And we want to find the area underneath this bell curve. OK, so if I just shade that area in here, and we're going to call this area here A. OK, so you're going to have to use, there are a range of ways to integrate this, but the way we're going to look at today, you're going to have to use three tricks. So we're going to call these three tricks, one, squared, two, polar, and three, substitution. Uh, substitution there. So, bit of a mystery for now. You don't know what these are referring to, but hopefully it'll become clear. And if you can remember these three words, then you'll be able to do the Gaussian integral for yourself without too much trouble. So, to begin with, squared. Right. So we want to find this area A. So let's write an expression for it. A equals the integral between plus infinity and minus infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. OK? We could equally write this in terms of a different variable. Would make no difference at all. OK? Between minus infinity and plus infinity of e to the minus y squared dy. Exactly the same thing, we've just swapped all our x's for y's, OK? Now, we're going to do something a bit strange here, and we're going to multiply this one by this one. Why are we doing that? Well, hopefully it'll become clear in the next section. But what we clearly are going to get is that a squared equals the integral from x equals minus infinity to plus infinity, y from between infinity and minus infinity, e to the minus x squared, e to the minus y squared, dy dx. Now you might be thinking, how come, when I multiply those together, I'm allowed to just put the y term inside the x integral and the x term inside the y integral? But the reason for that is that this term here doesn't have any y's in it. It's not a function of y. So it doesn't matter if it's inside the integral and obviously vice versa with the y term. Just with our knowledge of exponents, we can rewrite this as a squared equals, so these two integral signs, minus infinity here, infinity, minus infinity here, e to the minus x squared plus y squared dy dx. And that is the end of the squared step, OK? We just wanted to have re-expressed it in terms of these two independent variables, x and y. So we're now going to go on to the polar step. And what that means is we're going to try and convert from Cartesian coordinates, x's and y's, into polar coordinates, r's and thetas. So if you remember, that if you take some axes like this and you want to express a point, you could either do that in terms of its x-coordinate and its y-coordinate, like that, or you could do it in terms of a distance r and an angle theta away from the origin. OK? And what that gives us is x equals r cos theta, just from trigonometry, and y equals r sine theta. OK? And at this point, perhaps the most important thing to, to make you think about is we want to swap everything in here that's got an x or a y in it, and these are x limits and these are y limits. We want to swap them all for things in terms of r and theta. And what you must be aware of is that dy and dx is not equal to dr d theta. OK? We have to think a bit more carefully when we want to map from the xy plane to the r theta plane. And what we use to do that mapping 
is what we call the determinant of the Jacobian matrix. Okay, so the Jacobian matrix, if you remember, is the matrix of all first order derivatives of a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a table and then we're going to fill it in with all the derivatives. So if we do this table like this, okay. And if we write in here that this is dx, this is dy, this is dr, this is d theta. Okay, in our table. And we just now fill in the gaps in the table. So dx by dr, dx by dr just equals cos theta. dy by dr just equals sine theta. dx by d theta is minus r sine theta. dy by d theta is r cos theta. OK, and this in orange here is our Jacobian matrix. But I said to you, we want to have the determinant of Jacobian matrix. So if you remember, if I've got a matrix A, B, C, D down here, oops, and I want to take the determinant of it, so it's the square brackets, the, the straight line brackets, sorry. What I do is I do A times D minus B times C. So we're going to do exactly the same thing here. To find the determinant of our Jacobian, we're going to do the J determinant equals cos theta times R cos theta is R cos squared theta minus, minus R sine theta times sine theta. So that's minus minus becomes a plus R sine squared theta, which just equals R cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, which just equals r. If you remember, cos squared plus sine squared just equals 1. So we found that the determinant of our Jacobian matrix equals r. So let's just annotate this onto our equation from the squared step and say that this term here goes to r dr d theta. Okay? So the next thing we want to look at is this function, the integrand itself, okay? So e to the minus x squared plus y squared. If we think about just simple trigonometry, we look up here at our quite small polar coordinates graph, we can see that if we look at the triangle, x squared plus y squared must equal the hypotenuse, r squared. So this thing here goes to minus r squared, right? The last thing we have to consider in our polar step, in step two, is other limits, okay? And the way to go about this, I think that probably the best way, or the easiest way to go about this, is if you think about what we've got. We've got a two-dimensional plane with y direction and an x direction, okay? And our limits are plus infinity to minus infinity in both directions on the plane. So that is what you might call all of the plane. If we were dealing with polar coordinates and we wanted to get all of the plane, what we're going to have to do is get from r equals 0 all the way out to r equals infinity and for a full revolution of theta, which is 2 pi. So this goes to r infinity 0 and theta 2 pi 0. OK, so when we're going to make our new equation in terms of polar coordinates, we can write the limits like that. So a squared equals the integral from r equals infinity or between r equals infinity and r equals zero and between theta equals two pi and theta equals zero of the function e to the minus r squared integrated with respect to this this thing here, so we get this r dr d theta. Okay, and what I hope you'll immediately spot is that our integrand, which is now this thing, is not at all a function of theta, which means that we can already do one of our two integrals. So we can do this theta integral, because this thing is just a constant in terms of theta, it's not a function of theta.
So if we integrate a constant with respect to theta, we just get theta times that constant. So evaluating theta at 2 pi, you just get 2 pi, and at 0, you get 0. So this thing becomes our integral with respect to r multiplied by brackets 2 pi minus 0, which is just 2 pi. So the final step of our polar stage is that a squared equals the integral of r at infinity 0 e to the minus r squared r dr with a 2 pi out in front here, which we got from our theta integral. So if we now rub out some of the working here, OK, and we're now going to move on to our final step, which is the substitution step. OK, we're nearly there. We just need to work out how to do this integral that I've got written down here. Right, so what I'm also going to do is probably write that up here. So a squared equals 2 pi integral between r equals 0 and r equals infinity r e to the minus r squared dr. Right. And we are going to make the following substitution. We're going to say s, some new variable that we've chosen, s equals minus r squared. Okay? And just like with the polar coordinates, what we need to do is replace everything here that's in terms of r so that it's now in terms of s. Okay, so that's easy enough here. This thing just goes to s. But what about this dr term here? Okay? So to deal with the dr term, what we're going to have to do is we'll differentiate this here. So ds by dr equals minus 2r. Right, simple enough. And we want to just get dr on its own. So what is dr? dr equals, so we're going to multiply both sides by dr, and then we're going to divide both sides by minus 2r, and we're going to get that dr equals ds divided by minus 2r. So this thing is just ds divided by minus 2r. Right, we're doing pretty good. We're nearly there. So the last thing we need to consider before we make this switch is, that, is the limits. So at r equals 0, 0 squared is 0, minus 0 is 0. So it just equals, so s is from 0 at r equals infinity, we get infinity squared, which is just infinity again, but minus infinity. So it's minus infinity. OK, so that's these guys dealt with. Now, I hope you've spotted something, which is that our new term here, ds div divided by minus 2r, it's actually got two things in it that we can cancel. So we see that there's an r here. Cancel that with this r down here. And there's a 2 here. Cancel that 2 with this 2 down here. And now we can rewrite our function in terms of our new variable s. So a squared equals pi times the integral of r equals inf oh, blimey, of s equals minus infinity and zero e to the s, and then we've got ds divided by minus 1. So let's just take that minus sign out here. ds. Right. So we've now got a new integral just in terms of s, and it's finally one that we can actually do. So we've integrated e to the, s, e to the x before. It's very straightforward. So we get a squared equals minus pi, and we integrate e to the s, and we just get e to the s. OK, e to the minus infinity minus e to the 0. OK, so if we look at the function y equals e to the x, it looks like this. OK, so at minus infinity, as we go infinitely far in this direction, it goes to 0. So this term is just 0. And at e to the power of 0, well, anything to the power of 0 is just 1. It actually crosses the axis here at 1. 
So this goes to 1. So it's just 0 minus 1. So we end up with that a squared equals minus pi times minus 1, which is just pi. So the area underneath our basic Gaussian function up here, a just equals the square root of pi.